What's going on guys and welcome back to Top 10 Nerd. Here we are with a part four. Yeah, fantastic part four. <laughs> yeah, it turns out Spider-Man just can't stop getting his ass kicked or dying. One of the two, he actually dies quite a bit. So I'm here to rant some more about some not so pleasant moments in the web slinger's life. I'm Taylor McWaters, you're you, let's just get counting. Number 10, drugged and tortured. Classic, those are two things you never want to happen to you, in that order either. Age of Ultron was an event that went down in 2013 and I gotta tell you, nothing is worse than waking up and realizing you slept past your alarm. You feel panicked, you feel all hot in your chest, you feel stupid, and you still feel tired. Worst of all, you don't even get any more rest. It's just stress and anxiety all in one ball. But how about sleeping through the end of the world? Yeah, that's right. That's exactly where Peter Parker's story begins in all of this Ultron madness. He wakes up and the world is in ruins. Desperate to help and find answers, he hits the streets, only to be drugged and kidnapped by Ultron's goons. He then waited, badly beaten, to be sold to Ultron. So it's getting, it's bad, it's getting worse and worse. So after a daring rescue from Hawkeye, the team actually is frustrated with Hawkeye and Peter. Tony walks over to use some tech just to make sure he's all right, but in doing so could potentially compromise their secret location. Damn you, Tony even says to him. Sad. Imagine if Tony said damn you to you, you'd be like, oh, please. And before we go on to number nine, guys, if you could go ahead and toss us a thumbs up because it really helps us out here at our studio. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for watching and supporting. Okay, back to some sad Spider-Man times. Number nine, Aunt May. This time a little bit different, but still the same. So with Miles Morales breaking the internet more and more every day with Spider-Man 3 rumors, and of course the Spider-Man Miles Morales game, it's fair to look back on the saddest part of that first PS4 game. Peter is faced with the ultimate hero scenario. If he uses the antidote to save Aunt May, there won't be enough to save everybody else from the Devil's Breath bioagent. And it's really well done. I mean, many gamers, including myself, definitely shed a tear at this point. My throat got tight. I was like, hey, 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 skip. I don't want to see it. What if we use it to cure someone right now? Then there won't be enough to cure the others. So when the game was being made, interestingly enough, the big ups didn't want them to kill Aunt May at first. But then once they saw the flow of the story and how things were playing out, they simply said, you can kill Aunt May. You've earned it. You earned a part. Number eight. Bike messenger. Why, Peter, you're bleeding. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I stepped off a curb and got clipped by one of those bike messengers. Yeah, for sure, a bike messenger did that to your arm, not razor blades made by the Green Goblin. Yeah, so this dinner scene is anxiety central. Similar energy to when Michael Keaton's vulture is grilling Peter on the way to the dance. Yeah, that injury is one of many in the Spider-Man trilogy, but it's the location of the injury that gets Peter in the most amounts of trouble. Right on his arm, front and center. It was this moment where Norman Osborn realizes that he's Spider-Man. <sighs> if only you sat on his left. It would have been smooth sailing. Come on, man. You have senses. Your right is my left. You gotta flip it. Here you go. Number seven, impaled from a glider. So in the movie, it's a well-timed backflip that ends up taking out Norman Osborn. And the best part is, Norman does that to himself. He's like, and then he goes, who, and gets it. It's awesome. His own glider kills him. What a life lesson right there. Don't be a dick. So stupid. Like no one's there, I'm like, sorry. Well, in the comics, it went down a little bit differently. See, Ben Riley was a clone, of course, created by the Jackal, and went by the name of the Scarlet Spider. And it was him who, in fact, got smoked by this glider, causing his death immediately afterwards, revealing that Ben Riley is indeed the clone. Number six, he loses a leg. I have a great arm and leg joke at the end of this one. Here we go. It took me an hour, I'm like, that's it. Peter Parker, this time from Earth 982, AKA the MC2 universe. So after a battle with the Green Goblin, Peter ends up losing his entire left leg. So this happened about two years after the birth of his daughter, May, and the incident was so horrific for Peter that he quit. Yeah, he stopped being Spider-Man, which is sad, but then cut to many years later, May Parker grows up and puts on the suit herself. And she looks pretty badass. We love the MC2 universe. So while Peter is walking around with a fake leg and a cane, she's swinging around busting arms dealers. Too bad she didn't run into any legs dealers. Number five, rocked. Okay, we've seen Thanos throw a moon at the Avengers. We've seen him snap away half of the Avengers and half of all living creatures, in fact. 
but hand to hand, the Mad Titan is still brutal. If you look back now on the Infinity Gauntlet event, this was a wild ride. I mean, Wolverine's bones turn into rubber, Cyclops gets smothered by a clear block, Iron Man gets his head cut off, it's violent, it's spicy. And then Spider-Man, we see him get a face full of rock. Yeah, Traxia straight up beats him to death and then finishes him with a rock. That's some like caveman stuff right there. I mean, at least Thanos made the deaths of the other Avengers somewhat quick. I mean, come on guys. I feel like if I had to pick one way to go with Thanos, I would much rather be turned into dust than having a rock here. This is already messed up enough. We don't want that. Number four, he exploded. Yeah, so we touched on Marvel Zombies in part two or three or one. We lose track here, okay? Spider-Man's had a rough go. But in Marvel Zombies Return, we see Spider-Man after he gets transported to another world. Classic. But this time, the field trip goes dark when Spider-Man realizes he's in the past. So there's a lot of zombie stuff on the up and up. So the zombie Spider-Man in this world ends up having some of Sandman's crew for lunch. So Sandman gets out of Dodge, right? But upon doing this, he bumps into the Spider-Man and he's like, Oh, you again, you're not eating me, buddy. And then Sandman puts his self into Spider-Man's mouth, which is kind of like eating him, idiot. Which already, worst case scenario, would have that much sand in your mouth. And then to make things even worse, Sandman then grows and moves around until he explodes out of Spider-Man. Like a uh, gender reveal balloon. It's like, pa, it's sand. Just kidding, it's sand. Crunchy. Number three, he was crucified. That's right, in X-Men issue 191, we see our boy Pete on the front panel with the words Raiders of the Lost Temple written at the top. See, this issue is a lot of fun for everybody, but of course, Spider-Man. The issue begins with the Avengers and the X-Men trapped in this world where Kulan Gath has made everything a little bit old fashioned, like very old fashioned. His spell turned cars into horse-drawn carriages. It turned guns into swords, which way more fun in my opinion. And police officers turn into civic guards. The whole city becomes medieval times. It's insane. Then Spider-Man gets crucified and tortured, even admitting that he didn't think it would be possible to hurt so much. And Gath's barely begun. Yeah, he was upset. Honestly, he was one issue away from Ramsey Bolton walking in and calling him Reek instead of Pete. Going for the Game of Thrones fans, there you go. Number two, he dies. Again, again, again. Sometimes dying is just the way to go, especially if it's loud and heroic. Maybe you're like on your knees, you're yelling, you're ripping your shirt off or something cool, some kind of Dwayne The Rock Johnson way. You gotta do what you gotta do, even if that means dying alone with nobody to witness you being a badass. And that's exactly what happens in the story at the hands of Thanos. So once again, Thanos doesn't actually end the spider's life in this issue. It's his own heroic actions that puts the nail in the coffin. He's going over the mental checklist of things to do. You know, classic Spidey things things, pick up Mary Jane, fill up on web fluid, deliver some mean ass barbecue sauce to Aunt May's, the usual. And when a couple workers fall off the side of a building, Peter even acknowledges that it's another walk in the park for him. That is until the cooling machine explodes, sending Spider-Man hurling in the air. Now, seconds before his heart stops, he reflects on the fact that he always made jokes in dire times, then simply coming to realization that there are no more jokes. And crash, the barbecue sauce, breaks off the ground as Spider-Man dies. Really sad, a weird barbecue sauce twist, but it actually made it seem more sad, I don't know. But it gets worse. Just wait, there's more bad. Death isn't the end, especially in Thanos' case. He meets Peter Parker and then makes him watch as the mother he tries to save yells in agony over the loss of her child. So not only did Spider-Man get himself killed trying to save the two, but he didn't even save the kid. Bad luck Brian over here, come on. Number one. Let it ring. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Remember that song? It was great. Well, that's so good, man. Apple bottom jeans, boots with the fur. Alrighty. We'll finish off this list with one of my personal favorite moments of the spider's horrible run with luck. Maybe because I'm claustrophobic and this one triggered me. You've been warned. Spider-Man 300. There's a huge brawl with Venom and Spider-Man. And it's a lot of fun, right? A lot of webbing, a lot of punching and kicking and thwips. And at the beginning, Spider-Man is trying desperately to reach the Fantastic Four Sonic Blaster, right? Just one little boom, and then we're good. Eddie Brock is doing his villain monologue stuff, and Spidey's like, yeah, keep talking, keep talking. And he's trying to reach, he's trying to reach his blaster, and then Brock notices and slams him through the floor. Then Venom knocks him out and then Spider-Man wakes up upside down. Hmm. Yeah, he's webbed up to this giant bell. So when the clock strikes midnight, that heavy clapper 
It's gonna kill him. It's gonna get him right in the head. It's kind of like Saw in a way. It's really, really twisted. So in a last minute attempt, Peter barely manages to squeeze his hand out, stopping the bell from ringing. But of course, it's not easy. It's only time before the constant hitting will crush the bones in his hand. And he acknowledges this too. He knows that he's in a sticky situation. After barely escaping, the bell does finally ring. And if Peter sticks around, he too would die along with Venom. So even if you win, you lose. That's life, that's how life goes. Sometimes you're stuck between a bell and a hard place, literally. And before we wrap up here, I'm gonna read some of my favorite comments from our last rodeo. These ones come from top 10 superheroes turned into villains. So if you haven't watched it, you know where to go, or down there, whatever you're watching YouTube on. First comment comes from Ricky Muff. They say, two things I dislike in comics. Here we go. When heroes fight against other heroes, and when they turn heroes into villains. Yeah, I agree, man. You're all about keeping it real, keeping it fun. Like as soon as Hawkeye turned evil in Avengers 1, I was like, okay, this isn't gonna be like the entire time, is it? Like, uh... Like you gotta love some characters turning, like Anakin Skywalker, that's fine. You know, messes up some kids, does a force choke or two. He's growing, you know, he's growing as a person. Next comment comes from Darkstar Darren. They say that moment when I'm Taylor McWaters, you're you. Who snitched? Amanda snitched. I'll tell you right now, she snitched. She told me everything, Darkstar Darren. Like the time you were late for work, that one time, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, I'm telling everybody here. Yo, Chris, get in here, you're gonna love this shit. I'm telling him. Santana Blue Flame says, I've been watching this channel for almost a year and Taylor McWaters is one of my favorite narrators on here. No bop, and then you put two rocket ship emojis. That's us two, that's me and Santana Blue Flames <laughs> flying off into the sun because now we're best friends. Cool name for one, and secondly, thank you. I won't tell them that I paid you to comment that. Guys, thank you so much for watching. Please leave your thoughts, comments, concerns, secrets, all that jazz down below, because I love reading them. And next video, maybe I'll read out some of my other favorites. I don't know. I'm Taylor McWaters, you're you. Stay safe, we'll catch you next time.